um, I'm I'm going to do a bit of uh, explanation about the about this particular show uh, before I get into the the meat of the actual talk on American Impressionism. Um, this show is actually um, the National Arts Club show is from the um, uh, collection of Bank of America. It, it, it's a little deceptive that they, they're calling it American Impressionism because it's actually the precursors of, of American Impressionism through American Impressionism into um, the beginnings of, of modernism and 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 all that so they have in in the show some well-known names but not great pieces from some of them and they have some lesser known names that they have some really nice pieces of so if you've never been to the national arts club it's it's um, in Gramercy Park, and it's a really beautiful neighborhood. It's interesting to go down there. Um, I'm not saying that you shouldn't go see the show, but I'm saying that my expectations were a lot different than than what I got there. Um, so what I have put together today is um, a lot of it is drawn from the Metropolitan Museum, from the um, American wing. Um, the pieces that are on display permanently, you know, basically I check to see what's out and what's up. And most of the work that is from the Met that I have in this, in this thing, most of the work is up. So you can actually see these pieces in person. Um, so the other thing that we did when we went down to the um, National Arts Club is we went over to, what the heck is the name of that place? Um, Photo Photographiska, which is, which is a new photography museum. They um, had a show on... Um, animal portraits which was which was really kind of fun uh, a lot of dogs a few, a few cats and some video things but they, there's also a, a new show that's going up, um, by a really good photographer that's opening actually today so there are two shows in that in that location we also went over to the poster house which is on 23rd and I don't have the exact address here but it's on the it's kind of in Chelsea um uh going over on 23rd um so I believe it was one one something 100 and something um uh west 23rd anyway that's worth that's worth looking at too that that basically the po the poster house has um historic posters and they've got a show on now of of things that were kind of um from mid like early in the 30s and 40s um interesting interesting show there too so that being said there's an itinerary of stuff downtown, but I'm going to dive into the American Impressionism stuff because basically that's what I put out there that I was going to do in this talk. So that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> All right. So we're starting off with um, one of the things in, in the National Arts Club, which is kind of interesting, is they broke broke it down in some sections into um the hudson river school um tonalism which was a the actually the period in the mid to late 1800s that that was 
um, more influenced by uh, the European Barbizon school. In, in actuality, um, the Hudson River School, a lot of the work that was done on the large paintings was not done plein air, was not done out in nature. They would do sketches out there, but there, there was a restriction on how much they could take out into the field and paint. In the early 1800s, I believe it was 1835 or 1840, something like that, the collapsible tube was invented. And that's when uh, people like Corot and um, uh, Daubigny and a bunch of French painters went out into the field and they called this group the Barbizon School. They went out doors and painted. So that was actually the beginnings of, of working directly from nature in in oil paint it had been done a lot with watercolor a lot of sketching but it's it's very different okay so you know they also broke down this show into artist colonies so cape ann gloucester was one set of of painters um boston old lime had had a, a painting a painting group a painting school um uh Coscob, of course that's the the uh, Connecticut impressionists um Woodstock New Hope so in in um in Pennsylvania so each one of these groups they were painting the landscape they were painting near where near where they lived they each had their own spirit of place. You know, there there was a um, a movement out in Taos, um, uh, San Francisco, Carmel. Um, so basically, these these were very different groups that went out and painted. All right, I'm going to start here. Um, this wonderful Hasim is is on the on the um right it's just a beautiful piece um it's it's really a um prime example of a series that he did outdoors and this piece is is up at at the at the mat um And uh, for for my money, Hasim is one of the best of the bunch. He's he's a as far as the impressionist notion is concerned, he brought that to the landscape in America, and and really, you know, as you can see, very colorful. Um, on the on the left is is a William Merritt Chase um uh much more much more subdued um but chase was a great teacher and a great uh disseminator of the notion of painting directly from nature um he ran a school out in long island um which was very famous and and also taught in new york city all right so we're going to move on um these are two prime examples of the hudson river school uh painting um really it's, it's the first painting school in america um it's very detail oriented um it in in some ways the um the hudson river school is really an ecology movement because what had happened to the hudson Ver hudson valley was it really had been clear cut you see these kind of um, wonderful bucolic views that they're painting. Well, um, you can see in the, the painting on the on the right that that down in that valley there's there's some farming fields, um, and most of, if not all of, the the old growth forest has been clear cut. 
throughout the entire Hudson Valley. Um, you would have to get up into the Adirondacks to hit anything that was that was really old growth forest. Um, so really the Hudson River School was kind of um, a yearning for kind of paradise lost um, and and a you know kind of plea to to uh, kind of respect nature in 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 a way. Um, so I'm gonna move on now. Ah, okay. Um, on the on the left is a George Innes painting. Um, this is at the National. I have NAC when they're at the National Arts Club. Um, the one on the right is is a Corot from the Met, and Innes came out of the Hudson River School, painting those kind of detailed you know, painting eyelashes on trees. Um, they really were very detail-oriented and all of that. When um, Innes actually studied in, in Italy and studied in France, he was, he was exposed to the Barbizon School. And really the, the, um, the kind of pantheistic, metaphysical notions that that um uh Innes was involved in he he was actually his belief says he was involved with Swedenborgism which is kind of a um a metaphysical uh uh mysticism that that this um Swedish well Swedenborg um really brought um, to him. So he's, Innes was after kind of the underlying harmonies in nature and, and this as a, um, um, resonance of, of the unseen forces in, in, in the universe. Um, just telling you the story. And here are two more of the Innes's. Uh, the, oh, wait a minute. Okay, here's two more Innes's. The one on the on the left is is in the show at the National um, Arts Club, um, and the one on the right is a fabulous piece that's up at uh, the Met. Really beautiful, subtle, nuanced painting um but you can see um in this this is this is considered tonalism this is it's really very close colors um harmonic um uh not the 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 broken brushwork of of the impressionists so much um though you know Innes does have an inner glow uh it's different from from the the effort that the impressionists were involved in had to do with kind of direct observation and trying to capture the light and these pieces are more about that that um harmonic um uh tone and color relationship okay and here we have whistler um and whistler was very influential he um let's see Yeah, that um, uh, he was really an expat. He he didn't live in the United States. He came back and showed here, uh, but but for the most part, he spent most of his time in Europe. Um, 
he would do these paintings and this is a typical version of a nocturne so we know whistler's mother we know the portraits that he did but but a lot of these paintings are are um very much um kind of harmonic um uh passages and and uh kind of ethereal quality they're 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 misty they're they're kind of many of them are dark um and th this one has a a social underpinning this this um this garden um is kind of notorious as far as uh women of the night and and all that and people would have known that in in um in britain at the time he was kind of a bad boy he was a bit of a dandy uh but the influence of of whistler will, will become apparent as as i go forward here okay and this is a Twachman. Um, um, John Henry Twachman, uh, this was from 1885. Really, uh, it's a synthesis. Twachman had been in, in, in France. He was he was studying. He he actually um went back to the United States after after uh studying in in Germany in Munich and that's a very different type of 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 painting he came back to Paris and and really uh, adopted certain aspects of impressionism but there, there's really a very Asian feel to his work that there are these big planes of kind of gradient color very subtle um not about you know he did sketches out there in nature but the, this is a this is a large scale piece it's 60 by 79 inches um very interesting and this piece is is out at the mat so it can be seen and here's another uh piece by Twachman and this shows a lot more of that kind of broken brushwork and all that 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 um that we know in the impressionists this kind of sense of movement um and the effort to catch a sense of the immediacy of being out outdoors um It, Twachman, Twachman actually moved, he taught in the city, he taught at, I think, he either taught at the National Academy or he taught at, at uh, um, Art Students League, can't remember now, but um, th he, he actually would summer out in Greenwich, Connecticut, there's, there was the Bush Holly House, which used to be a um a bed and breakfast that a lot of artists would frequent and continue to frequent um but he purchased a small farmhouse and some acreage in Greenwich and set up his residence and studio there you know basically it was a good spot where he could go in each and then and then come back out and be surrounded by the landscape um and i'll talk more about this too um on the on the right again is Hasim and and this wonderful direct um lush little painting ah theodore robinson was another one of the the people that that came and went from the cause Cobb area he um he was one of the american artists that gathered around monet in Givenet. and in, in fact this 
painting is, you know, he studied at the Ecole de Beaux Arts and all that and learned traditional painting, but was really um, drawn to the kind of progressive impressionism of Monet. Um, living as a close friend and neighbor to the to to Monet, um, there was really an artist colony of of American painters that gathered in Giverny. Um, so. Robinson experimented with plein air, and this painting is actually um, the the village near Giverny. And again, you know, Robinson. Um, there's that kind of close study of nature that the that um that Monet would be very famous for. And I will move to this, which is the old guy himself, a wonderful Monet painting. And you can see how there was a bit of an influence there on Robinson. Um And Robinson would bring this back. Um, he was very familiar with what was going on with Monet's garden and all that. And he brought that information back to Twachman and Twachman actually developed his garden and developed his subject matter on his property nearby. Um, but again, here is another one of the American Impressionists. This, this piece is in the Montclair Museum it's a large scale piece that it says that it's 38 by 95, but the aspect ratio doesn't look quite right to me. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, it's a beautiful painting and, and a very direct response to nature um, in, in certain ways. But at this scale, uh, you know, it would be also studio invention, though, you know, Monet was not uh opposed to that i mean most of those water lily paintings were partially painted outdoors and mostly painted indoors uh building up those kinds of impostos and things like that he really needed um to work in the studio though he would have his gardeners carry things out into the garden and, and paint on them so again this fellow may or may not have painted this outdoors completely he may have painted it some some of the time outdoors. And here is John Singer Sargent's version of Claude Monet out painting in the woods. Um, again, Sargent um, is a crossover. He was very, you know, his his portraits, which were the pot boilers, the place where he earned most of his money were very academic, were very realistic and and wonderfully painted, but not that kind of freshness that's in this in this painting. And many of his watercolors are just these wonderful exuberant paintings that are painted directly from nature. Um, okay. And we're back to Chase. Um, so the, the piece the piece on the on the left is the one that I had at at the beginning. And this is a painting of Alice, um, Chase's wife, in the entry entry hall to their summer home in Shinnecock, um, in the you know in Southampton. Um, he he captures her in engaged in um, uh, handicraft of, of sewing um, a bit of apparel for one of their children. Uh, they had five children. Um, so actually the family, the family scene was very much uh, um, a repeated intimate subject matter that Chase would come back to time and again. Um, and on, on the right is, um, an earlier painting 
um, this is this is actually uh, 1886. The the one on the left is 1896. So um, this was painted of his um, of Alice Gerson, who would become his wife, Alice later on. Um, and this, the, they married in uh, 1887. So this was, uh, you know, something where uh, basically they were in Brooklyn. Um, uh, they, they lived there and she, she was out basically this is a small panel it's it's only 14 by 19 so it was a very fast sketch and you can see you know how um it it's really um just a wash of the of the earth tones and then the the greens and the water are kind of painted on into that underpainting And here is one of the classic Chase seaside pieces. Um, so that this was where he ran his summer school, and basically he would he would teach two days a week, and then the rest of the time he would spend painting and enjoying his family and hanging out there. Um, but, you know, if you look at the piece, I mean, basically there's there's a kind of um, uh, echo of those, of that rough work in those clouds in the rough work of the, the, the dresses that the, that the um, uh, women, are wearing on the beach. So it's kind of that brushwork unifies the composition. Ah. And back to Robinson. So he would, when when he would come back to the United States, he would go out and visit Twachman and, and uh, Alden Weir and the other um, painters that were out in Greenwich, and he would stay at the Bush Holly House and and do paintings like this. And this is the group of of ten um, that and the the characters changed. There were uh, some guys that dropped out, some people that came in, but this is this is basically. Um, the group, some of whom would come out to um, Greenwich and paint. And, you know, basically there's um, William Merritt Chase with that great mustache on the, <laughs> all the way on the, on the uh, left in the back row. Um, and these guys, you know, they, they, they painted together, they showed together, they, they did do group shows. Um, uh, and they developed the, this into an integration of impressionism and gave it a, um, an American flavor. Okay. Um, uh, and here we have Mary Cassatt on the on the left is a something which was quite rare. Actually, she only did two self portraits, and this is a a, a wonderful self portrait that she did. Um, it's underpainted um, in 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 watercolor, and then she came back over it with um, opaque white to um, paint up those ruffles and and really beautifully handled paint paintwork the brushwork in that dress is amazing um i might even want to try doing a little blow up at this point and get in there let's see zoom in on that dress so you can see how that how 
loose and wonderfully open it is but she gets it she gets that that feel of the of the ruffles and And this is uh, a painting of her of her sister. Um, Cassandra family spent the summers, um, you know, basically uh, ten miles west of Paris in in um, kind of a historic landmark uh, area. Um, but she kind of focused on the domestic environment. She portrayed her her sister um, fashionably dressed um, in this kind of walled off garden. Um, so Passat generally was really uninterested in plein air painting. She captured the effects of sunlight beautifully in this work, um, especially on, on, on the hat, but she's really not that interested in, in painting the landscape. It's really more about focusing on, on the narrative that, that you can get out of, out of, out of the figure. And of course we all know, you know, those wonderful, mother and child pieces that that Cassatt is so famous for. Okay. One of the things that that I also want to say is the exposure in America to what was going on in France was really pretty profound in by, you know, um this this painting on on the right by uh, Tarbo was in 1899. By that time, um, an art dealer by the name of Duran Rual had opened a gallery in New York and was showing uh, Degas and was showing um, uh, Manet, Monet, all all of the the great French impressionists were being shown in in New York City. So this composition to me has has a very strong element of of the the Degas um kind of propping and 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 um pushing the composition. You know, basically the 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 main activity in this composition is in in the upper third of the painting the rest of it is all taken up by brushwork um beautifully handled activated by it um very abstracted um and it kind of acts as a a foil for the for the 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 scene of this lovely young woman catching the light through the window And again, terrific facade. Um, again, these are these are on view at at the Met. So, um, ah, and there were a number of American painters. Uh, let me see. Oh, better. Yeah. Um, this is this is um, Thomas Wilmer doing, um, and he was kind of. An artist's artist. He he's um, very refined, very soft focused. Um, the letter he really is really one of his favorite themes. He did probably that I know of at least six different versions of of young women reading. I mean, basically, hey. Uh, we're texting all the time. So uh, the letter was the text of the time. Um, so this kind of contemplative, genteel environment, it's kind of an aesthetic quietism that that uh, 
harkens back to somebody like Vermeer, of course, which which was, you know, the reading the letters was was one of his one of his subject matters. Um, but also there's there's a formal arrangement in this and the Tarbo that that really um, echoes the arrangements in Japanese prints. The simplified pictorial design, the limited palette. Um, and and again, um, back to Whistler, who I had, who I had spoken about. And you know, Whistler did this in his in his a lot in his portraits. So this was very influential. Um, the piece on the on the um, left is a portrait of Alden Ware's wife, who was another one of the Impressionists, and we're going to see some more of his work now. Um, but here, here's the cast of characters. Uh, dead center is John Singer Sargent with Julian Ware at the Branchville farm that Ware bought after um, uh, Twachman bought his farm, uh, Ware went out to visit, loved loved it out there in Greenwich. So he he bought a farm in Branchville, Connecticut. Um, and on the top, you see uh, Anna Baker Weir. She is the lady in this painting. And there's a, a portrait of Twachman below. I keep talking about him. And uh, Hassim, Child Hassim was just a terrific painter and was there a lot and really supportive of 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 Twachman and and what was going on at, in that that Koskov school. Um, here is a fabulous piece by um, Ware and. The interesting part about Weir is, is he started out not really liking Impressionism. In fact, he was heard to grumble um, when he saw an Impressionist exhibition. Worse than a chamber of horrors. <laughs> but 10 years later, uh, here he is um, now, you know, Not many of the the paintings of 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 these folks integrated the new technology. This um, metal bridge was something which which had been built to take the place of a covered bridge, which was out there. Um, and he just, you know, fell in love with that color and and the play of that that red against the greens. So you know, basically, um, fundamentally solid forms and restrained uh, uh, broken brushwork really. Um, are part of this, of this, but he really needed that kind of structural stuff to play off against. Okay. And another, another person who used to come out to visit uh, at, at the, at the, at the, um, the Cos Cobb school was Ryder, um, who, mainly had his studio in the city, but um, came out and, and actually painted this from his experience being at Weir's farm. Uh, now, of course, this was not painted plein air. It's not an impressionist painting. Really, Ryder was a visionary painter and, uh, um, but you can see the, the difference between this and this, and this. Uh, Robert Reed was actually a mural painter 
um, a lot of the time he he was known for for doing installations. Um, he's one of the founding members of this uh, the ten American painters. Um, basically, you know, loosely kind of defined French trained association of 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 impressionist painters. It's it's really um, uh, he did decorative panels and things like that, but this was this was more um, you know uh, the the brushwork in the in the in the plant in the in the irises was really um, very fresh. The portrait mm, mm, a lot more stayed. And here, here is another example. Um, Benson was part of the Gloucester group. He was part of the, the group of painters that gathered up in Gloucester and painted the seashore. And uh, there was quite, quite a few, there were quite a few people that, that were out there. In fact, um, I think that, uh, that Edward Hopper, when he wasn't in Cape Cod, went to Gloucester quite a few times and painted there. Uh, in fact, um, the the Victorian um, that is that is the model for the house in Psycho was painted in Gloucester, um, but I digress. <laughs> um, okay, again, William Merritt Chase, the family as his subject matter, the this this group, the intimacy. It, it really has a very different flavor from the French Impressionists. There were scenes with children and and you know and families gathered at tables and things like that, but it wasn't really um, the focus of a lot of their work. Um, ah, and this is Edward Red Redfield um, again. Another another group of impressionists um, moved out into the um, the New Hope area in Pennsylvania. Um, really fresh color. This guy used to paint outdoors in the snow for crying out loud. Uh, fast painter, uh, <laughs> so he would paint. You know, basically, he would try and paint a painting in 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 one session. Um, and some of these were quite big. Uh, and here's another example of another one of the um, the Pennsylvania um, New Hope School, um, Robert Spencer. And you can see the structural things that that um, is a bit different in the in the uh the new hope folks there's there's i i really like the flavor of their work there's a a real um um pennsylvania academy had a had a real strong influence so there's a very much a um a structuralism in in their work that's a little different Okay, and now we're getting to George Bellows. This this actually is at at the Met. Um, not sure if this one's out. I think it is, um, but it's a small painting. It's eighteen by twenty one, um, uh, and you can see the vigorous brushwork and all that. And you know, very much, you know, picked up on uh, the painterliness of impressionism. But applying it to a different in a different way, and he was part of what would be known as the Ashcan School, which was really um, came in um, John Sloan, Bellows, um, uh, and several other painters were painting kind of more gritty subject matter than the than the Impressionists. And here is a John Sloan that is on the left. 
that's in in the show at the National Arts Club. Um, and it is, as my wife said, a rather existential painting. Uh, <laughs> this kid sitting on the rock looking into this dark water. Uh, and really interesting, again, you can see the echoes of Impressionism, but taken into in a different direction. Um, on, on the right is a Edward Hopper, his early kind of uh, French paintings. He worked there for, I think it was a year that he was over there and he did a whole group of these wonderful, very fresh paintings. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna close in on this so that we can see, see the brushwork a little bit because it's really worth looking at, and you can see how you know loose and open the brushwork is in in this piece. If if we didn't know this was an Edward Hopper, would we know it was an Edward Hopper? Yeah, maybe. It's it's got that kind of um, uh, desolate feel. There's no there's no presence of 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 people in it and none of that joyful exuberance of of the Im impressionists that we that we kind of know of right right offhand though there is some manet um realism in this that that um and you know the 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 loose brushwork is really lovely i mean he could really handle paint um, okay, this piece is is not out at the at the um, at the Met, but it's just such a beautiful painting. I love Jane Peterson. She is a transitional figure. She is somebody who painted in an impressionistic style, went to Europe. Actually, let me see what I've got here. I've got some things written up about her. Um, she basically reported her travels abroad, but this painting was painted from Gloucester. So she was a member of that Gloucester school that painted outdoors and all that. Um, she was a transition from the Impressionists into the Fauve, into later abstraction in, in, in America. Um, so she painted as a student in London, Spain, and Paris, where she um, she actually was a guest of Gertrude Stein. So she was really um, abreast of all the 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 newest um, avant garde painting. You know, Matisse. She would have seen Matisse. She would have seen Picasso in their early phases and and um the fauve in their in their earliest um first paintings um but you know she painted her home cities in new york palm beach gloucester um she taught um at the art students league and and several other places this woman had over 81 person shows in her lifetime. And I had never heard of her until I saw some of her pieces pop up on Antiques Roadshow and then started paying attention and saw her work in some galleries in New York. Um, she's just a, a fabulous painter that, you know, um, one of those ones that just, I never heard of before I really started paying close attention. And here is a Hassim on on the on the left and a, a Peterson on the right. Um, both um, actually uh, this is this was you know the end of World War One. Um, so there's a kind of patriotic um, uh, glimmer in these pieces. Um, you know, Avenue of the Allies um, is the only, really the only 
major impressionist to depict the home front during World War I, Hasim produced this flag series. So there's something like 30 canvases of uh, Fifth Avenue um, and adjacent streets decorated with the patriotic emblems uh, from 1916 to 1919. Uh, he did this uh, um, to help organize liber liberty drives and all that. Um, and Jane Peterson infused her work with that same kind of national pride, um, invites the viewer to enter the scene. It's, it's quite a, a marvelous piece. The, the uh, Peterson is, is a mixed media piece. It's gouache, which is opaque watercolor, watercolor, charcoal, and graphite on gray wove paper. So you can see in it how she um, came back and used the opaque watercolor. Let me see. Let me see if I can pop this up so we can look at it a little bit closer because it's worth it. You can see how she brought that white opaque um, uh, watercolor, the gouache, back over and trapped the 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 edges of these buildings to make to make them stand out more. And, you know, it's it's on a gray paper. So, you know, she, basically she's using the 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 ground color of the paper that's that's already there as part of the buildings. And and the and the road. OK. And. Um, we're, we're near, nearing the end. Um, on, the, on the right is um, a Hasim painting. And this is, this is actually one of the primo pieces in the, in the National um, uh, Arts Club show for my money. It's a really beautiful piece and very, very haunted in its own way. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna see what it's like when we close in. Yeah, so you can see there's a little figure in the window looking out the window at us, and and really interesting approach and texture. You know how he used the brushwork to to define the the um, rough hewn um, uh, shingles on 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 this on this house and his use of of um patterning in the brushwork in the in the foreground playing different kinds of staccato brushwork against that that um uh texture that that's in in the building itself And on on the left is this Chauncey Foster Ryder. I believe he was he was part of one of these um, groups. I don't have anything from the Taos group. Didn't really like the paintings that they had from that group in there. And I know there's some fabulous painters that that were in in that group, but um, I didn't see it in the show so I didn't grab those but this one on the on the left is a really wonderful painting also just let me get this and go in so we can see what that brushwork is like really chunky and um very much impostos that that are laid on there now this painting is from 1910 so this fellow would have been aware of what was going on in in Europe and and the kind of expressionistic business that was going on over there. Um, and this is our last piece in this in this talk. Um, Willard Metcalf was very much involved. Now this this is a late painting. This is from 1922. 
And you can see, you know, there's the impressionist brushwork, but there's also some of that kind of staccato that goes on in the in the fauve paintings, the kind of um, play of of complementary colors. You know, you've got the green, red and green playing off of each other. Um, um, the green in the foreground and the kind of orangey glow in the background. So there's a tension where where the stuff in the foreground is wanting to recede and the stuff in the background is wanting to come forward. There's that kind of warm and cool business happening in this painting. Um, so I hope I've given you some kind of a sense of, you know, there is a very American quality to these paintings, these open fields. It's a very different feel from um, a lot of what was going on in France. And um, although there's parallels and there's, there's you know, the, the poppy fields and all of that, that that were painted by Monet and Manet and Renoir, these are these are American landscapes in 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 a certain way. Um, so um, we are going to be meeting on the 17th the next time. Um, basically, um, and it is um, uh, Native American month in November. So we are going to do Pueblo Pottery, which is at the Metropolitan and also at another uh, venue um, right up the street from it. The um, Oh, God. I can't remember the name of the foundation, but um, you're, you're allowed to go and see their collection. And um, it, it, it's well worth the trip in for that. So if you go in to see the pottery, you can also go in and explore the, the American Impressionist wing. So I like okay. the way you give us the whole day's activity, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So okay. Much. Okay. All right. Thank you all for coming. I hope you have an enjoyable weekend.